Hey, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> hey, Mari. Good evening. Is that doing better? She is. She'll be here Sunday. Good. One more button, I gotta press. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Well, I got What's some, up? somebody's gonna turn the turn the deal on back in the back anyway. Hey, Tiger. Tiger Wood there. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He's out there. Hey, Joe. How you doing, buddy? Miss Wiley, you doing all right? Oh, you're good. You are live. All right. Hey, Matthew. Hey, Matthew. Can you go turn me on back there? I didn't get the. I always forget this is up. Well, we're. Hey, man. I'm on the mic. Is that right, Mike? On my well, he, all right, keep going, keep trying, flip it to flip it to this one, or I'll go back up there. I don't care, I don't hear it yet. Oh, hey, hey, Jared, quit, you flip me over on this one. It's on the main board there. It says repel. Hey, there we go. We got it. Keep going, I guess. Yeah, I think it's Death to that to do. Keep going. I think it's Tell Virgil can hear me. I don't know. Keep talking. Keep talking. All right, we'll be we'll, we'll be talking until that'll work, I think, for now. Okay. Yeah. Can you hear me, Virgil? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. All right. Here's my litmus test. We'll be in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 tonight. I don't know how many are online tonight. Gauging by this side of the building, almost everybody. <laughs> we got four people on one side and everybody else on the other. Hope everybody had a good Thanksgiving. Enjoyed your time with somebody. Andrea enjoyed it away from us. She was down house sitting for James while he was on vacation with his in-laws. I don't know where we'll go after Ecclesiastes chapter 10, or, or after Ecclesiastes is over, or we'll go back earlier or not, but we'll um, or somebody else says, I'd love to teach. If you let you sit down for a while, I'll let you teach. But okay. So he's he's looking, he's been looking for wisdom. He, uh, these last this chapter is going to continue on with some different wisdom thoughts. Uh, chapter 10 starts off with some some proverbs, as you might see them actually in the book of Proverbs. And give some insight into things that we believe Solomon was able to see in the world around him, and they kind of continue the thoughts of chapter chapter nine, how it ended, how wisdom can can do good things in the world, but it can be easily undermined or destroyed the, the good that's, that it produces. So he had been kind of talking about that in the end of chapter nine as well. Dead flies make a perfumer's oil stink, so a little foolishness is weightier than wisdom and honor. We'll kind of go through these a little bit one at a time. So any thoughts on that? Anybody know how perfumes were made in the ancient world? I, was, I had Andrew kind of look it up on the way here tonight. But if you think about how ancient, or if you kind of think about probably how they did it, the, we, we like to use alcohol to, to, to um, keep our favorite fragrances in so that they last longer, right? In the ancient world, they oftentimes used oils like uh, olive oil or um, 
uh, I think Andrew said like almond oil and soup, stuff like that. So we had, they, they used oils. Well, oils can go rancid, right? We know that. Um, on top of that, what do you put in, into perfumes? We well, put, you either had to go pick flowers and press those down, uh, get the oils out of them. You've got, uh, I think they like, you have uh, frankincense is, 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 is a, uh, extracted from a tree. And so you've got uh, things like that. You've got balsam is also there. You've got different roses and things like that. So you start thinking about the, I think one, one source said it was, it was chemistry at its finest that, you know, it took thousands of years to perfect these arts that they, that they put into Becky perfumes. And you also start thinking a lot of these things like herbs are seasonal. So you have only a, a limited period of time each year in which you can go get the, the, uh, the, the, the ingredients that you would put into your perfume. So you, you think about the, the time that a chemist the perfumer would have put into making perfume only to wake up the next, you know, and find a, a dead fly in it and has ruined all that work that he's put into it. So uh, it, it's one of those things, like I said, we can go to the, the grocery store and buy perfume that can last forever because we, we uh, put it in alcohol today, but th there are, there are some, still, I think, I think there's probably some, um, perfumeries that uh, still use the ancient arts of musks and, and oils and stuff. But you, you think about what Solomon sees here, all this time and energy that a perfumer would put into something is almost, it's, it's, it's like a wisdom coming out of a, a wise man's mouth. Just as a fly can run that, that perfume that the perfumer has done, and he may have, you may have run a, a year's worth of work if you think about, you know, I've got to go get herbs or spices and stuff to put in that if it's seasonal. I've maybe I've ruined months of work by one fly. In the same way, a fool can come along after a wise person and ruin everything. And so that's kind of what he sees there. And I think, sadly, I think he also sees wisdom, though he's talked about how much superior it is to foolishness, he sees foolishness as being sometimes weightier than the, than the wisdom because it can run so much so quickly. Any thoughts on that? A wise man's heart, verse 2, directs him, this is chapter 10, to a wise man's heart directs him toward the right, but the foolish man's heart directs him toward the left. The right side, of course, is, a, is, a, is typically we think of as a place of honor. It's a place of strength. Um, Christ sits at the right hand of God. The left hand, of course, is, is typically considered the weaker hand for most of the people in the world. It's the unclean hand in, in many cultures today. I think that was one of those things when I went to India, that's one of those culture things they try to teach you. Don't use your left hand in public. That's the, that's the cleanup hand, right? That's the hand that you don't use in everyday uh, life. You, you use your right hand to eat with, to shake hands with, to, to interact with others. The left hand is used for other things. So the left hand is the, the unclean, weaker, in, uh, inferior hand in their mind. And so he feels like in the same way, a, a wise person will go to the right the strength, the, 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 side, the side of strength, a fool will go to the side of weakness. So right-handed folks are wiser than left-handed people? Yes. I do. I do. Yes. <laughs> I have to go home with a lefty, so I got to I, I know, that's what I'm saying. I wish you'd rest in. The, verse 3 is, even when the fool walks down the road, his sense is lacking, and he demonstrates to everyone that he is a fool. Anybody... Have any thoughts on that? I don't. I have no earthly idea what Solomon's talking about here, unless he had they had, unless he had teenagers back then that like to wear their drawers down this far and show their underwear. Maybe that was. Maybe you can see those fools walking down there. I don't know. Like I said, I I, I think maybe just what so Solomon has been watching mankind in their interactions with each other, in their daily lives, in their work, in their sleep, in their eating, whatever. And I I think it's just one of those. He's just come to the realization I can spot a fool a mile away. 
And I, and I think that's kind of what he's saying here. I don't know exactly what he, in, in particular, he has seen, but he does feel like, that given time, I think maybe a, a fool is, is, uh, is seen to be what he is. If the ruler's temper rises against you, do not abandon your position because composer allays great offenses. He continues with, uh, starting in verse 4, some, with uh, some, I, was, I would call it some seri a series of pictures. And he's, he's already observed many things and used uh, his observations to, to learn about wisdom. And the first thing he sees here, and I think he kind of alludes to this in chapter 8, verse 2 through 6, where he says, Keep the command of the king because the oath before God. Do not be in a hurry to leave him. Do not join in an evil matter, for he will do whatever he pleases. Since the word of the king is authoritative, who will say to him, What are you doing? He who keeps royal command experiences no trouble, for a wise heart knows the proper time and procedure. There is a proper time and a procedure for every delight when a man's trouble is heavy upon him. Uh, he he was he, he kind of talked about a king earlier about you know it's hard to go against what they have to say. Here he he, he talks about and if it's Solomon he knows exactly what he's talking about. A king is like anybody else has their up days and their down days and their happy times and their angry times. And uh, he's he's saying if you find yourself in front of the king and he's uh, reading you the riot act. Stand there and take it, because to turn and walk away, you're going to lose. One, you're going to lose face. It could cost you maybe more than that. It, I mean, you never know exactly what a king's thinking at any point. So, you, could you have lost your life if you turned your back on a king while he's telling you off? I don't know. It could be. And so, the the, the king's ruler, the king's decrees, uh, is, are, are one of those things that you that he. Uh, Hold on just a second. I never know when I'm going to get paged from work. Okay, no, it's not work. Yesterday was a horrible day, so I'm, I'm a little bit uh, gun shy today. Any any other thoughts on that? Like I said, I, it's, I think it's just one of those. Um, I think we've all gotten in trouble and had to take our, our licks at whatever, maybe for doing something we shouldn't have, or getting reprimanded for something, and it's just. Stand up to it, or stand and take it, because that's that's what is expected of you. There is an evil I have seen, verse 5, under the sun, like an error which goes forth from a ruler. Folly is set in many exalted places, while rich men sit in humble places. I have seen slaves riding on horses, and princes walking like slaves on the land. He's also observed some weird things, and I don't know that he's seen it with himself, because he is king, but maybe he's seen some other kings or rulers doing this. And he, he, I think he sees it kind of maybe as uh, a mistake, the, the way things happen. One is where a, a ruler, I think, makes a decree to go do something and is given into the hands of fools. While the ones who are who are uh, probably better able to, to carry it out, people of rich men, they sit in the humble places. So we, it, it almost sounds like what he's seeing is, is, is a king or a ruler has, has made some decree to get something done, and it's, like I said, it's, it's put into the hands of some of people that don't know how to get it done. And so what do they typically do when that happens? They make a worse mess of it instead of giving it to the people it should have been given to. And so I think that maybe is what he's talking about here. And then... Verse. He's also saying, doesn't it? Things are not as they appear all the time. I mean, right. You know, it's, you, you, life doesn't, isn't always what it seems to be. Right. And and sometimes it's flipped around. It's, 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 the world's not always right side up, right? And that's, and that's kind of what he sees here as well, where he says, I've, I've seen people that should be walking, riding on the horse while the, while the prince is leading him along, right? So it's... It, it's, it's things that he sees as folly, he sees it as foolishness, and things that shouldn't happen, but he does see it happen. Verse 8. He, uh, he's, he's, 
these prior verses, we'll start right there, seem to deal with the, the higher levels of society, the kings and the, the rulers and the and their, their uh, place in the world. He's now going to tur turn toward the working class and see some folly there. So we've seen some folly with the rich where they make decisions and let in inferior people carry out their wishes, where we have rich people walking while the, the, the beggar's riding the horse, or the slave's riding the horse, excuse me. Now he turns toward the working class. He talks about he who digs a pit may fall into it and a serpent may bite him who breaks through a wall. He who quarries stones may be hurt by them and he who splits logs may be endangered by them. If the ax is dull and he does not sharpen its edge, then he must exert more strength. Wisdom has the advantage of giving success. Uh, so we'll stop right there. So he, he, he notices some things, even in, in the working class, it's not just the ru rulers that make mistakes in life. We, we have a, a, a guy who's a, a ditch digger who, after he's dug, up, dug the ditch, forgets it's there and, and falls down into it. So that's somebody that has not paid attention to what they're doing. Kind of want to, I've seen my dog fall into a hole that he dug. I mean, that's just one of those. It's, I'd agree with that. <laughs> Andrew said, hard work is hazardous for your health with those online. I don't know exactly what he's talking about, a, a person that is breaking through a wall. Uh, I think maybe, uh, is, is it the King James says a hedge? Or there's, yeah. Um, where do serpents like to, to be at? Dark places. Dark places, but they also like to be where it's warm, right? Yeah. So, and, um, I, there was a time that I was I was uh, fishing as a kid that, that not far from my house. There was a little bridge uh, that I used to like to go fish in, and I was down there fishing, waiting in the in the, in the water one day, and I, I looked up and there was a, a water moccasin looking right at me. He was they'd, they'd put a, a, a fence across it, and uh, I hightailed it out of there. But you know, it, it, you're not paying attention sometimes, and, and you you can walk right up on a snake. Andrea and I, this was years ago. Uh, Back when they were building I-49, it wasn't too far from my parents' house, and we, we decided to go for a walk one day. And we were walking along, and all of a sudden, there's this black snake, big honking big black snake, right in the path. And Andrea is terrified of snakes. He was just sitting there not doing anything, so I just stepped over him, and I had to coax her to walk. But snakes are just out there. You just, it, you're walking along, and there's one there. You, you, you're clearing out maybe a hedgerow or something that is maybe what they're do doing here. Again, this is somebody working. That's why the guy fell in the ditch. He saw the snake. <laughs> that, Joe says that's why he fell in the ditch. He was he dug a hole, saw the snake, and took off running and fell right into it. It's very likely, uh, but he but again this, these are working men doing their job, and they're not paying attention to what they're doing. And when they don't pay attention, bad things can happen to them. And we have here. The guy clearing out the wall or clearing out the hedgerow, not paying attention. There's a snake in there. He gets bitten. Um, again, rock cutters, verse 9, the hazards of, of, of cutting rock. It's, it's a dangerous job. Cutting wood, cut, uh, felling trees, things like that are dangerous. I think, have I not heard that, that um, l lumberjacking is one of the most dangerous uh, professions in the in the world. It's I mean, you just look at what they do, and so I mean, it's it's amazing what they do to to cut down these big trees. But it's a very very dangerous. So we it's, it was dangerous even in Solomon's day. I think he's just saying, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in life. There's always you need to be smart about what you're doing. Right. I mean, you know, if if you're not paying attention. Uh, you can, there's, there's danger to say anything. You can get one yard and cut the timber's uh, hedges or, or, you know, walking down the street. Why don't you keep, careful. Why don't you keep it to work in a shipyard and the dangers of that? I think mean, there's, it, it, I, I think it was talking out at uh, the Huffmasters, you were talking about your days in the, in the ship, in building ships and stuff like that. It's danger, there's danger in everything except for the computer world. I, I, I have probably the, the easiest job in the world. Um, I guess I could start carpal tunnel. Ah, oh, it's tough. It's tough. Typing. But yeah, the, people live their life, they don't pay attention, and they get hurt. And that's, 
I think what he sees there. And it's, 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 I, I, I hate to say this because I, I know there probably is one, but I always used to tell James, there, I, I rarely find very many things that I would consider an accident, a true accident in the world. Accidents are usually because somebody wasn't paying attention. Right? And so. Um, you just need wisdom in all yeah. aspects of life. That's what right. I'm trying to get at. Exactly. Foolishness and not paying attention gets you in trouble. Wisdom and paying attention can, can save your life. And of course, verse 10, um, I couldn't help but think about you tonight, Mike. You know, the, the, the sharp tools that a, that a carpenter uses, whether it's an axe or a saw or a chisel. Um, the duller the blade, the duller the, the, the tool, the, the, the more energy it takes to get the work done. Uh, a, a wise person would sharpen his tools before he used them right. Um, the last couple of weekends, I was flipping to the channel and I, the, the still uh, with the, the lumberjacking competition. I love watching those guys with a sharp axe just hack away at a tree. And, and but uh, those those axes are razor sharp, right? When they when they go to use those, they're they're not wasting energy on a dull blade. And so, I, in the same way that a sharp tool helps a task become easier. Wisdom can help make things easier in the, in the, in the right hands and can speed success along. Any other thoughts on that? <laughs> Verse 11, one of the older, weirder jobs. If the serpent bites before being charmed, there is no profit in the charmer. There may not be no, any more life in the charmer if he doesn't uh, charm the snake properly. I, th I think one source said in verse 9, the workers work too fast and get hurt. In verse 11, the snake charmer didn't work fast enough. That was one thing I did not see in, when I went to India. That was a, a snake charmer. Maybe I'll have to go back. <laughs> Verse 12. Words from the mouth of a wise man are gracious while the lips of a fool consume him. At the beginning of his talking is folly and the end of it is wicked madness. Yet the fool multiplies words. No man knows what will happen and who can tell him what will come after him. The coil of a fool so wearies him that he does not even know how to go to a city. Again, this is more thoughts on wisdom. It goes all the way through the end of the chapter. But it seems the, the verse 12 through 15 seems to deal with what comes out of a, a person's mouth or a, a people's mouth. First is the, is, the voice, is the words that come out of a wise person's mouth. They're sweet. They're gracious. They're, well, I, I think we, he's already talked about the, the difference between a wise man and a foolish man. But a wise man can save a city, a fool can take it down. It's, it's one of those, the wise person is that. But then a, a foolish, foolish person starts talking, you're just like, I wish he would be quiet. And then he keeps going. And he would say, I wish he would be quiet. And he keeps going. And he wears himself out talking. He's so, he's, he's so uh, uh, full of himself or whatever. And he wears himself out. And um, There's an old proverb, Doug, that says, Remain silent and be thought a fool. Speak and remove, remove all that. Uh, I, in, in verse 15, it's the toil. I don't know what he's, I think what he's saying here is the toil of a fool so wearies him that he does not know how to go to a city. I don't know exactly what he's talking about, but it almost sounds like he, if you're on a, on a trip with him, he's, he talks so much, he'll walk past the exit that he's supposed to go on. You sure? I, well, I can tell. I can. I can give you an example. A few years ago, Andrea and I had gone down to see James, probably at a, at a game at Harding, and uh, that drive back from Harding is is brutal, uh, especially at night. So, and uh, I usually I'll drive down and Andrea drive back or whatever. But she was driving back, and. To, to pass the time, Andrea loves trivia, so I, so I found a web page on the internet that had trivia, so I was asking her Harry Potter trivia or whatever tri trivia it was. We were, and we, we were playing, and we looked up and we were at the Van Buren exit. 
We had driven, uh, just, so, you know, we weren't paying attention because we got so sidetracked in, in, in other things. And I think we see maybe the same thing with the, the fool is he, he's so full of himself and he's so into, you surely want to hear what I have to say that um, he, he just doesn't, he, he doesn't have the brains to, to go in when he needs to. Any other thoughts on that? I don't, I don't even see that anywhere. Okay, what do you see, Mike? Well, he talks about that being so weary. And you're just talking about he's, there's people he can't get to. Yeah. It looks to me like the guys you know, that are, are foolish, they're out there working their fool head off. And that, to me, going to the city at that time would be for refreshment, for, okay. for, for you know. Take a break. Yeah, yeah take a break, uh, okay. rest, uh, medical aid, whatever. But these guys out there, they work so hard, they they can't even get there because they're just as foolish. They okay. just work themselves into it. Okay. So Mike, so Mike's take is is, is different. I like it. I like it as well. Is, is that these guys are out there working again? We have this, in the prior verses. We have these foolish uh, tree cutters, woodworkers, hole diggers. That, that maybe what you're saying is they're they're not paying attention, and also maybe because they are that way, they they talk too much and don't know when to go home. <laughs> is that kind of what you're saying there? Kind of. No. No. <laughs> to me, the key point was uh, they get they get tired. They're they're weary. That's the reason they can't get to the city. It's not because they're too stupid to get there. Well, I think well, I think what they did they they weird themselves out talking is what it, it, it sounds like to me is they that he starts talking and he, he multiplies his words um, and it wearies him so he does not know how to go to the city. I don't know. It says the labor of the foolish, not the words on it. The toil of the toil. Oh, okay. The toil of the fool. Okay. Okay. Oh great! Now I got I got two people I got two people against me. But it's in, it's in a weird place with in you know Mark yeah. And a few verses higher. So yeah, so okay. So maybe fifteen should have been moved up a few verses. I don't know. Okay. That's kind of the way I would. Okay. Okay. Well, so so it almost sounds like from twelve through fourteen we've got a guy who who, who talks to boredom, and then what you're saying is the toil of a fool. Okay. Okay. All right. There was there was a there was a commercial break of the workers. Okay. All right. I, I'll accept that. I have to, I guess. I got two against one. Okay. If you want to be your right, <laughs> <laughs> So, so that, that makes sense to everybody is that we've, we've got the kind of verse 12 through 14 is, is the words coming out of the fool and then 15, the toil of the fool, which would maybe kind of yeah, I, I, I don't know why he wouldn't have tied that back to the, the foolish workers earlier, but yeah. Okay, so 15 is in Mike's, is, is you've got a person that worked, that, a fool that works so long that he, he wears himself out and doesn't know to go back in. Okay, I think that's it. All right, verse 16. He's, he turns now uh, to some thoughts about the king and the ruler of, the, of, a, of an area. Woe to you, O land, whose king is a lad and whose princes feast in the morning. So he sees some, some problems when you have a ruler who is too young to know how to rule properly. And it, it's interesting that, that just a few generations from him, there's going to be a seven-year-old to take over, right? Um, mainly because Athaliah had killed everybody but him. But, but yeah, we have, and he's, was a good king for a while until his mentor died. But he sees he sees problems with a, a, a country or a nation whose rulers are too young. Any idea what he means? Whose princes feast in the morning? When are you supposed to have your your parties? After the work's done. After the work's done. So what you have is a ruler who's so young, he's he's partying all day. Instead of doing, instead of ruling during the day and coming together for a, a celebratory meal at the end of the day, he wastes his whole day in gluttony, and so um, it, it it it'll wear the country out. Blessed are you, O land, whose king is of nobility and whose princes eat at the appropriate time for strength and not for drunkenness. So again, he, this is this goes with that. We have a, a king who has been raised to be a king. He's of age. He knows how to rule properly. He eats at the proper time. He works at the proper time, and that's a, that's a nation that will be blessed. The other one is a woe to you poor country that has a a uh, uh, 
the ruler that's too young. Through insolence, the rafters sag. No, oh, sorry, through indolence, excuse me. Through indolence, the rafters sag, and through slackness, the house leaks. Again, we're seeing laziness and idleness in, in the involvement of building a house. You built your own house, didn't you, right? Yeah. Does it leak or sag? <laughs> no comment? Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, those of you who know how to build a house, you know the, the importance of putting good quality work and, and time and effort into it. Um, and so the, for the stability of the house, a, a wise builder is much better than a, than a lazy and, and idle uh, ruler. Or, or carpenter. <clears throat> and, and it's not just, I th it's not just the, the building of the house, but houses have maintenance as well, right? If you have a hailstorm around here and don't get your roof repaired, it's going to start leaking and it, it, you'll have things that go wrong from that. So you have disrepair uh, can also be a, a problem in, in, a, in, a, in a building. Men prepare a meal for enjoyment, and wine makes life merry, and money is the answer to everything. <laughs> so I'm not sure what he's coming to around here, but but he's he's talked already about the, the blessings of God and giving a, you a job to work at, a, a home to go to, a meal to eat, a, a sleeping. And I think what we're saying here is, you know, it's not wrong to enjoy a good meal and, and, and money is not, you know, is, is there to, to, be, to be used to fulfill these things. <clears throat> Maybe money can buy a good meal every once in a while unless somebody else pays for it at a nice restaurant for your anniversary. Yeah. <laughs> I told George I'd tell him when my my anniversary was. Furthermore, in your bedchamber, do not curse a king, and in your sleeping rooms, do not curse a rich man, for a bird of the heavens will carry the sound, and the winged creature will make the matter known. He had said a couple chapters ago, if you're a if you're a, a boss, don't take it to heart too much what the what the employees say because you might have been there in their shoes at one time. But interestingly enough here, he's, been he's kind of given some advice toward how to, to behave yourself in front of the king. If he's, if he's reading you the riot act, stand there and take it. And we have here, it's kind of interesting, don't even in your bedchamber where you think it's the most private place in the world with you and your wife only, don't badmouth the king because there's going to be a bird to carry the thing somewhere. Is that where the saying tells the little bird told you? Yeah, exactly. What'd you say, Mike? No, that's what I said. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what they, what, what, what's the saying the, 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 uh, about keeping secrets? Um, ah. but, but secrets are not, are, are not very well kept. And so uh, it's just one of those things. Just, he's just trying to tell them. A secret is only good between two people and only if one of them is dead. I think that's really the, the saying that I was thinking of. But I think we, we have uh, sayings, walls have ears, a little bird told me. Um, anyway, just just be careful what you say and, and as it comes to the, it could come before the king and if it comes before his ears, you could find yourself uh, having to answer some questions. Any comments? I heard the bell ring, so I don't want to. Get into chapter 11. I'm glad for all who was able to make it out tonight. Kind of a rainy night. All right. We'll call it. And I won't turn it off. I'll put it on you. Can I turn it off, Jared? Yeah. We'll see. What are you going to do next? We've got our 20, chap 20 verses. Next week's only 10. Gonna I'm going to go through two chapters. <laughs> <laughs> After that, I have no earthly idea. Yeah. 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 It looks really nice. <laughs>
Have a good day, Joe. Yeah. Yes, he came down this afternoon. Yeah, he did come back. I thought I understood you. Oh, my Oh, my God. Oh, my Watching anymore? Was no one's on anymore. They no. gave up after my last Hey, now, all right. Be careful what you say. Hey. We're getting started. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't know. You got a Devo? You got a Devo? I got one of those. All right. If you want to go ahead and mark your songbook, it'll be number 907. A little, little much. I guess I can step back. 907, go ahead and mark that. Mark the gentle voice. We'll sing the first and last after we've had a lesson. And then before that, kind of as we get started tonight, we'll sing number 226, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. 226. And then we'll have Justin go for it. Opening prayer. 226. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, 
Come for songs of loudest praise. Teach me ever to adore thee. May I still thy goodness prove while the hope of endless glory fills my heart with joy and love. Here I raise my Ebenezer, hither by thy help I've come, and I hope by thy good pleasure safely to arrive at home. Jesus sought me when a stranger, wandering from the fold of God, he to rescue me from danger, interposed his precious blood. Oh, to grace how great a debtor I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a fetter, bind my wandering heart to thee. Never let me wander from thee. Never leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. 907 after a lesson, we'll have just a note, please, some prayer. <coughs> Pray with me. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight and we humbly come before you and thank you for this opportunity to come together and, and worship you and, and study a portion of your word. We ask that our worship is, is pleasing to you. Lord, we thank you for all the, all the many blessings that you've, that you've given to us. We know we have so much to be thankful for and we know that, we, that everything that we have comes from you. Lord, we, we ask that you continue to watch over, watch over us um, as we, as a nation, as we, as we continue to work our way through this, through this time, be with those who are, are struggling, be with those who are, are sick, especially those within our, within our number, um, be with them and, and keep them healthy. We just ask that you be with all the all the doctors and nurses and emergency personnel and, and everyone that's working to combat this virus. Lord, we ask that you continue to watch over our nation, our leaders, and, and help them in this time to continue to, to make decisions that are, that are going to put you, you first, Lord. Lord, we, we thank you for for all the great work that's being done in this congregation. We thank you for our, our elders and deacons and, and preachers and, and everyone that, that supports this. Lord, thank you most importantly for your son Jesus. Thank you for the sacrifice that he made for us. Lord, we know there's going to be times when we, when we fall short. We ask that you continue to forgive us when that happens. Continue to be with us as we go through this service and watch over us as we Go to our places to stay. And it's in your son's name we pray. Amen. When I was four years old, our family took a family vacation. Mom said there were about three cars of family that were traveling. We stopped for at a gas station. And whenever they left, they left me. Mother thought that I was in a car with some other family, and that was the car I had been riding in. But uh, anyway, it wasn't until the next stop that they figured out that I wasn't there. I, I don't remember really how long she said it was, but 
I do remember she said it seemed like days. And finally, of course, they came back. Uh, Daddy's trying to talk her out of it, but uh, she wanted to. She came back and frantically ran into the gas station. And there I was, sitting up on the counter, eating ice cream. And I said, oh, hi, Mama. We're having a party. She said that the, uh, the owner of the gas station said, well, this little boy can really talk. <laughs> she, he said, he doesn't meet a stranger. Said he greeted everybody, customer that came in. He said, I'd like to keep him. He's really good for business. <laughs> well, a very similar thing happened in Luke chapter 2 with, in the life of Jesus. Uh, his family went with a family, with the family, uh, to Jerusalem for Passover. And whenever they got ready to leave, they assumed that he was with other family. And actually, they went three days' journey before they realized, or a day's journey, and it, it took them three days when they got back to find him. And Jesus was in the temple, he was 12 years old, and he was questioning and being questioned by the wisest of the wise in the temple. In fact, it says they were very, very uh, surprised at his wisdom. But in verse 48, tells about whenever Mary went in and saw him. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Look, your father and I have sought you anxiously. In fact, she was saying, we have been worried to death about you. Why, why have you done this? Jesus' answer was, I, I must be about my father's business. But obviously, since she didn't really understand that at the time, she thought on it later. But uh, like any other mother, she said, hey, you, you come to back home with us. You're not staying here. And, and Jesus did. So the question comes to us today is, can we lose Jesus? When, when, they, when they lost Jesus, it wasn't because they didn't love him. It wasn't because they weren't interested in him. It was simply they just took for granted that he was with other family, that he, he was somewhere where he wasn't. And that can happen in our lives if we're not careful. Because we are pressed by the world. We are busy people. And we can get so wrapped up in other things that we lose sight of something or someone that's very, very important. Have we ever been guilty of misplacing Jesus in our life? Perhaps uh, leaving him in the darkness when we are trying to hide a sin, you cannot have a sin, he knows. Perhaps when we were angry or upset and we cursed and swore and never knew him like Peter did? Or maybe just neglect and not taking note of what is really the big decision to know. It's easy to do and time and again, the scriptures warn us about neglect. Sometimes, you know, we need to be reminded. That's why that times like tonight, to be able to study God's word together. That's why the Lord's day is so important to uh, be reminded that's the purpose of the feast, the Lord's Supper. We even have on our table, do this in remembrance 
of me. So if we've misplaced the Christ, where do we find him? Well, when Mary and Joseph went back, they found him where they left him. We're told by the scriptures, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. He hasn't moved. If there's a distance between you and God, it's because you have placed it there. I have placed it there. God has not forsaken me. And so tonight, if, if we can help you to rediscover the master in your life, or if you, we can help you to find him, now's a good time. So come on, Billy, and stand and sing. Hark the gentle voice of Jesus, fall tenderly upon your ear. Sweet is cry of love and pity, call up, turn and listen, stay and hear. Ye that labor and are laboring upon your dear Lord's breast, ye that labor and are heavy laden, come and I will give you rest. Then his loving, tender voice obeying, bear his yoke, his burden take. Find the yoke his hand is on you laying, light and easy for his sake. Ye that labor and are heavy lean upon your dear Lord's breast, ye that labor and are heavy. Only a couple of announcements tonight. Uh, just please remember those that are, are on our sick list, and especially would you uh, be mindful of Miss Wilma. She will have surgery Monday uh, the 7th uh, for her uh, cancer, and we're certainly praying for the very best of all outcomes on that. Uh, I think Jeremy has a... Uh, an announcement to make, and then after that, uh, if you'll just please remain seated, then we'll be dismissed with a prayer. Uh, David Chu couldn't be here tonight. His girls are they're all quarantining for a couple of days, but he wanted me to talk to you about the uh, situation at his school. We've decided to to uh, make that something we can help with. And so we are helping David with that and his team. They have about, just the kids that he teaches, about 110 students at uh, JOK uh, Kelly Middle School. And they're, they're trying to just meet some basic needs with this group, uh, things like toothpaste and, and socks and underwear. And so there's a collection going on with that. And if you want to help with that, David's got a Venmo. You can, you can send that to or give it to him uh, a later time we're going to try to do that there's a box out a couple boxes for travel soap shampoo little things like that that we can put some kits together and help them with that part if you have some of those we haven't traveled a lot but if you have some of those you've stockpiled and that's a good time to bring them and we can put them together before the 11th and they can pass that out before school ends uh, but it, that's just one thing that they're they're trying to help with in the situation a lot of those students he says have lost Due to, due to COVID, their parents have lost jobs, a lot of difficult times like most people have. But this is just one way that the church has opportunity to help. And if you can do that, or want to talk to David more about that, you're welcome to get a hold of him. Uh, we have a closing prayer. Corbin. Corbin, got our closing prayer. Please bow. Dear Lord, thank you for this great day you've given us and the that we are able to come and worship you, Lord, and as a family and a church, and we hope that 
and help other strangers, trying times, and um, it's been hard on everyone, some more than others, and we hope that we can just keep everybody safe and just make it out there. Amen. Amen.